Hello once again and welcome back to my Character Crusade Unbound Season 2 uh, Let's Play featuring Alucel, the Alteration Swordsman. Uh, how's it going everybody? I am doing pretty well. Um, this is a bit different scenery than, than where we left off last time, so let's go ahead and, uh, and do a quick little recap here. So, last episode was a pretty big one. Um, we reunited... Uh, Fenrig and Ruki at Juker's Monument. Um, and in that moment, Alucel let his guard down, and he kind of uh, talked with Raya about his past, and it turns out that him and Raya are actually long-lost siblings, um, broken up by uh, a Thalmor attack in Hammerfell. Um... This flooded Alucel with a whole bunch of <laughs> human feelings that he's not used to feeling because he's always suppressed them. Um, chief among them probably guilt for endangering her on this little quest that he was dragging her along on. Um, so in the middle of the night, uh, he left the campsite um, and fled to Rorik's head after making her believe that they were going to head down to Falkreath and then to uh, Foral Host through Riften. Um, so we went to Rorikstead, we picked up Eric the Slayer as our new porter, because we need somebody to carry all our stuff that we loot so we can sell it and spend that money on training. Um, then we made our way up to Solitude, um, and this didn't actually happen on camera, I, I did all this off camera just because, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't much going on there. Um... We sold off all our stuff. I trained a little bit um, in destruction with Sibyl, uh, the court wizard of the Blue Palace. Um, and I uh, crafted some katanas uh, to level up the uh, blacksmithing skill. And uh, I did get enough um, levels in those skills to actually be able to reach level... What was it? 23. Uh, and we're also even more than halfway to level 24 right now. Um, I took the, uh, third level of the Mage Armor perk, so now I have 200%, um, my, my flesh spells are 200% stronger than they normally would be. Um, this saves us from physical damage, um, and I know I've been saying this a lot, but <laughs> I, I really, from now on, I need to be focusing on magic resistance because, um, uh, we're probably going to start fighting dragons here pretty soon, so um, Alter Resistance is probably next. Um, that being said, I think I've altered uh, my goal a little bit here. Um, so I think the plan was to um, mislead Raya into thinking we were coming down to Falkreath and then heading to um, Riften and Foralhost from there. Um, and then the plan was to come up through uh, Rorikstead, pick up Eric, go to Solitude, and then head into Mount An the Mount Anthor area and see what Haldir had for us over here. Um, I really have some some major story points planned for this area over here, so uh, uh, that that we have some stuff to look forward to. But I, I'm really trying to. We need to let things settle a little bit after the last episode. That was that was pretty. Uh, kind of a traumatic episode for um, a lot of the characters here. Um, so just to kind of pace things out a little bit more, uh, I think we need some slower episodes. So what I'm thinking is um, Eric is kind of untested. Uh, he's going to need some training. Um, I know that Alucel doesn't really like help uh, in terms of combat, but he... Um, He's also not the type who is going to go into dangerous situations uh, with unknown entities. So we have a couple of bounties from Whiterun um, that we hadn't taken care of yet. Um, and we kind of have a little bit of time to kill. We, we're not on any kind of urgent, urgent track here right now. Um, so we were going to take Eric on uh, a bounty to Silent moon's camp killing the bandit leader here um see how he can handle himself a little bit um and then if we have time maybe we will uh head over to redaron's retreat and get um amarin's sword for him um and get some valuable levels in um 
in uh, one handed and block, uh, which is the reward for that quest. Um, but for now, uh, gonna focus on Silent Moon's camp. See see what uh, see what we end up with as far as our fancy and magic spell counts and everything. Um, and this is just this will give us some fun uh, action oriented episodes uh, after some very heavily story oriented episodes uh, before. Um, and as far as what the plan is after that, uh, I'm not really sure. I'm going uh, out of town on vacation for the next week or week and a half, so I'm not going to be able to record at all. Um, but that will give me some time to think about what uh, the next steps should be. Um, we're supposed to, for the uh, Unbound Season 2 uh, podcast, our, um, the episode 3 that just came out last week, I believe, um, it, it was a locational episode, so we're all supposed to end up at uh, Foral Host with uh, Ragat, the Dragon Priest there. Um, so when I get back from vacation, I might just go ahead and head straight there from, uh, I'll take like the Windhelm path or something like that so that we don't have to cut back through uh, Falkreath and potentially um, cross paths with Raya again. Um, but yeah, that's where we're supposed to end up with that's where we're supposed to end up, um, I guess, by the, the next episode after. I'm not really sure how it works out <laughs> logistically uh, when we're supposed to end up there, but um, but I feel like it's pretty loose. Um, so yeah, by the time I get, get home from vacation, um, we might take care of the rest of the Galder uh, uh, Galder quest, maybe check out to see what's going on with Mistwatch here with that with that crazed uh, prisoner um, that told us about uh, people being held captive captive there, um, and then just kind of take our time getting back down to Foral Host there for the next for the next story session. Um, yeah, but for now let's uh, let's go clear um, Silent Moons. Man, you know, it's I probably only play Skyrim. I really only play Skyrim right now for uh, this Unbound uh, project. Um, so that's about two times a week or so. But when it's been a few days uh, since I played Skyrim and I get back into it, man, it looks good, doesn't it? It's always like a breath of fresh air to come back. Even like Fallout 4, which is a much newer game and technically. Uh, should be the better looking one. I come back to Skyrim and it's just, it's amazing. Every time. Alright, let's kill some bandits. That guy went down easy. I think there's another sneaky bastard over here. Maybe not. Okay, well he's got some bow skills. got another mage. I really thought there was another archer over here somewhere. Oh, all right. That hurt. Um, let's use a ward to get close to this guy. We'll take his knife attacks. Okay, that's not working so well. Um, <laughs> how come I'm not doing any damage to him, I wonder? Maybe I just wasn't quite hitting him just right with the, uh, with the angle on the steps. I don't know. Okay, now we're already two spells deep into our 15 count now. Okay. Outside is complete. Let's go ahead and loot these guys so we don't forget where they are. Um, we still have to go inside uh, the dungeon here. 
to get to the bandit leader, which is the uh, which is the bounty. But I want to take the opportunity to get anything that we can sell before we go in there and potentially forget where all these guys came from. How did this guy pick up an ice spike? Was that a wayward ice spike from one of these other mages here? Um, I hate bandits and thieves. Men like these raid our town every year. Feel like I'm missing one. Uh, let's use our trusty instincts here. So we can smell the rotting flesh. That's better. Probably didn't need the first shoes. Oh well. Um, okay, and I think that there's some pretty good loot up there in the forge area. The Lunar Forge, as it were. Did I loot her? She looks pretty naked, so I think I did. Skill books. Love every one of those. Smithing. That's useful. Iron ingots, also useful. Lots of good stuff we can sell there. Notes on the Lunar Forge. We'll probably sell that. We're actually not too interested in the uh, magical effects of the Forge here. But we will sell the uh, magical items that it's made by. Um, like many other uh, bandit or dungeon locations, there's uh, there's some unique ways around this one. Um, this is one of my preferred paths, actually. If you come around here, there's actually some uh, some stuff that you can't reach otherwise, like another lunar weapon. I don't think it's always an axe, but sometimes it is. There's some potions, um, and I think there's some more over here on the shelf, too. Oh yeah, big potions. Nice. Don't care about the armor. Um, and then you can actually drop down in here and go through the actual dungeon part of this backwards, uh, which makes it a lot easier. Um, if you're playing a uh, an assassin or sneaky type char character, uh, this is one of those interesting paths that you can take um, to kind of flank all the enemies in the entire place. Sneak up behind them. Okay, we definitely need a light spell. Uh, I don't think so. That door is locked. Gonna take that slaughter fish though for sure. Delicious. I can sell the troll fat. Potions for sale. More lunar weapons. All right, let's get ready. Okay, that's the bandit leader right there, I believe. Oh, nice bash. He's pretty handy with that shield, huh? Ooh. <laughs> nice kill cam. Alright, so Eric's got some talent. He can hold his own, even though he's green, he is obviously formidable. Something tells me he's got some of that ancient Nord blood in him. The Juker and Yalti and Haldir and Olaf all had. I like to believe that these uh, these Nords are born with a lifetime supply of piss and vinegar. 
kind of why uh, I love playing Nords more than anything else in this game, I think. Okay, well, if that was a test, uh, I think Eric passed with flying colors. He's got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now, too. Um, he's uh, very quick to mention how little experience he has. In fact, that he doesn't have any experience. Um, that we're kind of his uh, his first client as far as being a mercenary. Um, but he came in here, he kicked ass, and he took names against uh, some dangerous enemies. So. Alucel's impressed. Um, even though Alucel mainly just wants him around to carry his loot for him. Um, still good to know that he doesn't have to uh, split his attention worrying about protecting Eric in these dangerous situations. He can just focus on, on honing his own skills. So that makes Alucel happy. Um, which kind of leads me to um, thinking that it would be a good time to talk about positive negative value pairs. Ooh, except, what's this? Hey, this is kind of cool, actually. Alright, so this was kind of, we can think of this dungeon clear as um, kind of a rite of passage for Eric. Well, hey, that's not something you see every day. Right. Um, a skeleton hand, <laughs> uh, holding up a uh, an elven sword out of the water. So Good I'm day, thinking. Buddy. Keeping well. What do you need? What do you need? Uh, that Eric is gonna. Okay. Got see this as a sign. Alucel's not. Um, He's not superstitious or spiritual to the point where he thinks that this is anything other than a coincidence, but Eric, on the other hand, he's a Nord. He tends to be superstitious, um, a little bit spiritual. He's seeing this as an ancient ancestor, granting him this this um, this fancy blade as kind of a reward for his successful rite of passage here in this in this in clearing silent moons. So let's go ahead and make sure that Eric Eric equips this sword for himself here. Um, so that's kind of cool. This this kind of helps flesh out the character a little bit. Um, I mean, Eric's one of those characters that has an established backstory already, so we don't have to really fill in too much. But as we go forward, it's always fun to kind of add to his story. Um, his present and future story, so... Uh, so I think we're going to probably have to come up with a name for the sword for him. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm lost in thought, which makes me lose my way in the, <laughs> the Amazing Follower Tweaks uh, menus as well. They're not always the easiest thing to navigate on its own, but when you're distracted, tend to get lost a little easier. There we go. Alright, looks like he's definitely got the sword equipped. So yeah, now I think we have to uh, think of a name. Something that kind of mixes... Uh, it's an elven blade. So it, it's likely pretty old. It could be ancient. It could be an old Merithic era, era blade, even though it's it's of the current style. It's probably not that old, um, other than the fact that it was being held up by a completely decomposed skeletal hand. <laughs> so it could be ancient. We can just go ahead and say it's an ancient elven blade. Um, so I gotta think up of a name that, that kind of sounds elven and Nordic at the same time. Um, that's probably not something I'm going to come up with on the spot right here, but uh, but it's something I'll have in my head, probably on vacation. 
Um, and I might... I, I really don't want to install any more mods at this point, but I, I, it might be worth um, hitting up Jackson's Renamer or just throwing a super cheap uh, enchantment on it to actually rename it for him. Okay, so right now we're going to go ahead and turn in this bounty for um, uh, for killing the bandit leader at Silent Moons. Wow, this guy gets around. It feels like every time we step up to a major hold, he is heading out. I wonder how he does it. He's always one step ahead of us. So yeah, we're going to sell off our loot, we're going to turn in the quest, and then um, this was a nice, short, and sweet episode, I think. We've got a little bit of story in there, we got some action, we managed not to die, even though we came close. Um, now I just got boring, mundane stuff as far as just selling off our loot, um, seeing if we can buy enough materials for crafting more katanas, um, and turning in the... Uh, the bounty for the quest we just did. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut the episode here, and I'll pick it up uh, next time for uh, retrieving Amran's family sword while we're here. And I think that'll probably be the last episode that I record for probably a good week or two um, until I get back on vacation and, and can kind of kind of determine what the next steps of this story is. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Take care, and I will see you next time.